Hi. In this video, we will consider three main steps of the scorecard development process in Plugin Score Modeler. The first one is data preparation. The second one is data analysis. And the third one is directly modeling. To begin with, let's consider what the scorecard is. A scorecard is a table displaying a number of characteristics with points for each of them. To get a rate or score, we need to sum the point of client's characteristics. Increasing score indicates declining risk. The higher the score, the trustworthy the client. So we are going to develop a scorecard with Plugin Score Modeler. First of all, we need to load a data set. The data set is being loaded. This data set should contain a variable that we call a target variable. We are going to predict this variable using other variables. At the top row, names of variables are displayed. They have been automatically uploaded from a top row of the Excel file. We click OK and load the data set. Then we click Next. In the Open dialog window, it is possible to choose an action that can be performed on anomalies. Now we will just disable records with anomalies because there are only five of them. And we finish this step. Now if needed, we can work with anomalies in detail. For example, we can show only anomalies here. And we have already mentioned there are only five of them and these rows are disabled. On the left, we can see a number of categories for categorical variables. And on the right, some histograms for all the variables are displayed. We click Finish Processing and we need to delete the disabled rows. It takes some time. In this open window, the whole process data set is shown. We should select a target variable. It should be a variable with only two categories. And in our case, the good category is a category with a low credit risk. It should be noted that Plugin Score Modeler automatically divides the whole data set into two subsets a training subset and a validation subset. We will use the training subset to train our model, and the validation subset will be used to test our model. Here we can manually assign the row to the validation subset, or we can return back to the training subset. Then we proceed to the Variables tab. Here we see some statistics. IV is an abbreviation for Information Value. Information value is a measure of the predictive power of a specific variable. So if we sort the rows by IV, savings will be the most predictive variable, and home ownership will be the least predictive variable. All numerical variables have been automatically transformed into the categorical ones, but we need to correct this binning. For example, Let's have a look at the job time variable. There are a few simple rules for binning. Maximum five different categories are allowed. Each category should comprise of at least 5% of a subset. And we are trying to maximize IV. Here it equals 0.79. It's a very predictive variable. And maybe the most important rule, there should be a logical trend. Here is a rising logical trend. Thus, for example, a client with a great work experience, for example, five years, last category, will be less risky than a client without any work experience. These two categories have about the same bad rate, so we can merge them. Now we have only four categories. We can move a vertical ace or just click Set Value if we need, for example, if we need an integer number. Now, when the correct binning for all the variables is done, we move forward to the Scorecard tab. The Scorecard has been built automatically, and here we can see the Scorecard points for each variable and each category. We can change the Scorecard points in an expert way. For example, it's necessary to renew a logical order, logical trend. The more experience, the more points. So we assign 132 instead of 152. Now we look at the characteristics of the model. One of the main characteristics is Gini coefficient and the rock curve. The Gini value for training and validation subsets is presented here. If a value of Gini coefficient is greater than 0.6, the model is considered to be a very good classifier. There are also the Kolmogorov-Smirnov curves with a good result, 
64 and 68 for validation and training subsets. The cumulative good versus bad rates graph and the important graph, which shows good and bad distributions. A red graph displays distribution of bads, while a green graph displays distribution of goods. The mean value for bads equals 459, and the mean value for goods equals 722. Here we can also see the cutoff point that provides a decision rule to categorize clients into low-risk and high-risk classes. Clients with a score higher than the cutoff point will be classified as good, while clients with a score lower than the cutoff point will be classified as bad. We move the cutoff point to 597. Let's have a look at the classification matrices with this cutoff point. We see that 84% of bads are correctly classified. That means that only one of seven bads will be classified incorrectly. So we can conclude that this scorecard is quite precise. Let's look at the training and validation subset separately. Training and validation. We see that classification correctness, error matrix, changed insufficiently. That means that the scorecard is not only a good classifier, but also a stable classifier. So the scorecard is both good and stable classifier. These properties of the scorecard are crucial. Now we can have a look at the Scoring Report tab. We can sort the rows by the score. We see that for the low scores, a bad prediction is automatically generated, while for the scores higher than the cutoff points, 597, a good prediction is displayed. The higher the score, the lower the risk. If needed, we can export this report by clicking Export Table. Alternatively, we can save our scorecard with points for each category to a file or C-sharp source code. Here on the Risk Bands Report tab, we can see the level of risk for each range. We need these bands to develop different credit policies for different risk categories of clients. To sum up, the scorecard development process is divided into three main steps. Data preparation, data analysis, and modeling. We will consider some more aspects of scorecard building in Plug and Score Modeler in our next videos.